In this episode, new GPT model from OpenAI has been released, an Acrobat robot from China that doesn't cost an arm and a leg, Neuralink chip progress report, Microsoft military AI, flying motorcycle turned jet drone, and more. Let's hit it. OpenAI has introduced GPT-4.0, which stands for Omni and means multimodality. It's much smarter than the older versions and will be available to everyone for free. GPT-4.0 will be rolled out over the next few weeks, so what do we know about its capabilities? Well, first of all, GPT-4.0 is equal to GPT-4 in intelligence, but its text, picture, and audio processing is through the roof. The model understands voice, text, and images. While GPT-4 Turbo can handle image and text, GPT-4.0 added speech and a context window of 128,000 tokens. Yes, ChatGPT supported voice mode before, but the new model enhances this feature and allows you to communicate with the bot as an assistant, which reacts to you in real time and even recognizes your emotions and in response, generates its own. The visual capabilities have gotten better as well. By the picture on the screen, ChatGPT can now tell what's wrong with the program code or what brand of clothes a person is wearing, and also translate the menu in a restaurant into another language. In the future, the model will be able to watch the game with you live and explain the rules. OpenAI also said that GPT-4.0 is twice as fast as GPT-4, half the price, and has higher speed limits. The silver lining, though, is that due to fears of misuse, the company will only launch voice support for a small group of trusted partners for now. AI companies have been major newsmakers for over a year now. It's perfectly understandable. ChatGPT has made a real revolution proving that AI is not a fantasy. It's a tool that can be applied to almost anything in life, but you gotta know how it works first. The most effective way to learn about AI and machine learning is through the Artificial Intelligence Engineer program developed by Simply Learn in collaboration with IBM. Simply Learn is the world's number one online bootcamp for technology, business, and programming. Their programs are designed and delivered by world-renowned universities and corporations via live online classes featuring top industry performers and global leaders. The Artificial Intelligence Engineer program will help you dive deeper into AI, from generative AI basics, chat GPT and programming to advanced topics like applied data science and machine learning with Python. The course program is unique. It covers all aspects of developing your career, including the most cutting edge tools, exclusive hackathons, integrated labs, live sessions with experts and an AI master certificate at the end of the program. Simply Learn is on your side and offers many financing options, including installments. Switch up and course report reviews confirm that this is a launchpad for your career. And there's other programs at Simply Learn tailored for industries and roles in AI and machine learning. Take a step towards advancing your career with our sponsor of today's video, Simply Learn. Go to simplylearn.com, visit the link in the description below or in our pinned comment to try it out. But hurry, spaces are limited. And Neuralink graced us with an update about their brain implant experiment. In February, you've already seen a video where the happy owner of the first chip played various games by controlling the mouse cursor with his mind. Now, 100 days after the operation, details emerge. Turns out, during the first weeks, some of the implant threads began to come out of the brain, which led to data loss. To solve the problem, engineers changed the device's algorithm to make it more sensitive to neuron signals and approved the method of converting them into cursor movements. After a few weeks, the patient, Nolan Arbo, was able to use the implant to control his laptop from different positions, including lying in bed. At the same time, the speed and accuracy of the cursor control reached a rate of 8 BPS. In comparison, engineers achieved 10 BPS with a mouse. Neuralink's current goal is to further improve efficiency of cursor control as well as to expand the implant's capabilities, such as text input. In the future, the company plans to enable the implant to control robotic arms, wheelchairs, and other devices.
Unitree has promptly unveiled its version of Above Human Capabilities robot previously announced by Boston Dynamics in its new Atlas. Unitree's updated G1 can not only stand up in strange ways and fully rotate its body, but also has superpowers, namely accessibility and price. $16,000 for a humanoid robot, are you kidding me? This will definitely generate interest around the world. Remember how the H1 costs about $90,000? Big difference right there. Obviously, it's not just the price, but also what can it do? The G1 is built on the basis of high performance 8 core processor and uses Wi Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2 for communication. Its joints, with a maximum torque of up to 120 Newton meter, have a total of 23 to 43 degrees of freedom depending on the model, standard or extended. The weight also depends on the version, from 77 to 103 pounds or 35 to 47 kilos. And get this, the robot can be folded into a compact case and carried. It can move at a speed of 6 feet or 2 meters per second and the 9000 milliamp battery lasts around 2 hours. The robot is also a notable acrobat and can keep its balance with small jolts. Developers claim that the force in the hands can be adjusted. For example, the robot can hold a glass bottle with one hand and knock off its cap with the other. The G1 is also equipped with a depth camera and 3D LiDAR. For 16 big ones, what do you guys think? Yay or nay? And flying motorcycle manufacturer Mayman Airspace decided to go into a different niche and introduce a family of jet drones with high-speed vertical takeoff and landing equipped with artificial intelligence. They can deliver everything and anything from medical supplies to Hellfire missiles at speeds of 500 miles or 800 kilometers per hour. The flagship product will be the Razor Toll, shown to the audience so far only as a 3D printed mock-up. It's reported that it actually became the successor of the flying motorcycle AUV Mayman Speeder Air Utility Vehicle. The main difference is that the Razor is a scalable family of autonomous military drones designed to perform various tasks. The vehicle is equipped with four outboard vector thrust jet gas turbine engines that can burn any heavy fuel and refuel in minutes, giving it a significant advantage over its electric powered counterparts. Depending on the options, it can carry payloads from 100 to 1,000 pounds or 45 to 450 kilograms and fly at altitudes of up to 4 miles or 6 kilometers. It can also automatically abort flight and land without the use of a parachute. But most importantly, the Razor has an artificial intelligence based software package for navigation and control. AI capabilities provide the drone with situational awareness, the ability to navigate where GPS is not available, and perform a number of other tasks. Once we get Mayman's test videos, we will let you know. Meanwhile, Microsoft has released a chatbot for US intelligence services. The company presented a generative model of artificial intelligence based on GPT-4 developed specifically for spooks. The company presented a generative model of artificial intelligence based on GPT-4 developed specifically for spooks. Obviously, it works without an internet connection. This will allow three-letter agencies to analyze top-secret information without the risk of leaks as well as safely communicate with the chatbot. At the same time, developers warn that the model can be misleading, which isn't a new thing at this point, but Microsoft says that this is only possible when the chatbot is, quote, misused. Okay, Microsoft, but neural network hallucinations are considered uncontrollable, so any information on how you got that to work, please let us know. More on AI, GPT-4 has found another job for itself. AI is now training robots better than humans. The system uses a fundamentally new approach, quote, learning from scratch, where the robot learns complex skills in a virtual environment from hints written by GPT and then moves on to perform tasks in the real world. For example, developers were able to teach the robot to balance and walk on a yoga ball solely through simulation training. Dr. Eureka outperformed humans in training the robot, achieving a 34% increase in speed and a 20% increase in distance traveled compared to a human trained bot. And by the way, Dr. Eureka is a new open source software package available to everyone. This is probably a Pandora's box of a question, but what skills would you guys train robots for? Artificial intelligence has synthesized 32 candidate cancer drugs that have shown excellent interactions with the MEK1 and mTOR signaling proteins. 
Polygon was developed by researchers at the University of California, San Diego. The Polygon platform is unique in that it can search for molecules with multiple targets. Quote, suppressing both proteins allows killing cancer cells since inhibiting only one of them is not enough. End quote. Remarkably, the drugs had very few off-target reactions with other proteins. This indicates fine-tuning of the drug to its intended targets. The AI was trained on more than 1 million known bioactive molecules with detailed information on their chemical properties and interactions with target proteins. Polygon is able to generate original molecular compounds based on desired chemical properties. To do this, scientists simply need to tell the AI how the future drug should interact with target proteins. Currently, scientists continue to test the properties of candidate drugs and are constantly on the lookout for new ones. SpaceX unveiled their EVA spacesuit designed for spacewalks. Astronauts will try it on for the first time during the Polaris Dawn mission, part of the Polaris program. Led by billionaire Jared Isaacman, two of the four crew members will walk out into space while aboard the Crew Dragon. All four will wear EVA spacesuits since due to the ship's lack of an airlock, all will have to operate in depressurized conditions. A Skywalker device will be installed in the forward hatch with arm restraints to help the astronauts exit the ship. To test the spacesuits, the crew must undergo a special program that evaluates the mobility and performance of the spacesuit in microgravity. SpaceX engineers have already conducted a series of tests in vacuum conditions where the Crew Dragon capsule was subjected to complete depressurization with four dummies inside. Polaris Dawn participants plan to spend five days in orbit, starting in an elliptical orbit with an altitude of 120 to 750 miles or 190 to 1200 kilometers and culminating at 870 miles or 1400 kilometers. After collecting data on the radiation environment at this altitude, the craft will lower the orbit to 430 miles or 700 kilometers where the spacewalk will take place. The crew plans to test the reliability of communications via Starlink satellites as well as conduct a number of scientific experiments. Good luck to you guys! Zion Solutions Group will be the first systems integrator for Digit from Agility Robotics. It will help interested customers implement the robot into existing manufacturing operations and maximize its benefits. According to Zion Solutions, Digit utilizes artificial intelligence models that allow it to quickly and continuously adapt to new tasks and workflows. It can also safely work indoors with humans and perform a variety of complex, repetitive and sometimes dangerous tasks in logistics and manufacturing operations. The company has Agility Arc, which is a cloud-based automation platform for deploying and managing Digit's fleet of robots. Agility Robotics says it can simplify the deployment lifecycle from mapping facilities and defining workflows to managing operations and troubleshooting. All in all, it sounds cool, but there have been very few practical implementations thus far, yet a separate factory is already being built to produce Digit. Seems like the list of Digit's victories is about to get a comb over. And finally, an original solution from Romila Lab. Here, the engineers have taught the Ewok robot to move with the help of an ordinary tape measure. The maximum range of action, by the way, is four feet or 1.2 meters. A tape measure is much simpler lifting technology than say a combination of wheels and vacuum suction cups. It sounds like Romila is all about fun and games, but Ewok's reliability is serious business. The robot is planned to check and repair towers, bridges, power plants, and even ships. How original is this idea, gang? And engineers from around the world continue to conduct experiments on turning front legs of four-legged robots into arms. Introducing the Locoman Project. It's a Unitree Go 1 Robopod with two inexpensive and lightweight modular hands with three degrees of freedom. Locoman utilizes the combined mobility and functionality of legs and grippers for complex handling tasks that require precise 6D end effector positioning. To make it work, engineers have refined its onboard control system's expanding capabilities of the full body controller. Judging by the video, success is not far away. Would you consider robot dogs with hands attached to front legs as humanoids or is it offensive to even ask, are you humanoid fluid?
And by the way, Lynx Dynamics has taught their robot dog W1 to walk, twist, and maneuver on its hind legs. The next step is supposed to be handling objects. In general, more and more companies are trying to turn four-legged robots into useful bipeds. And in recent years, we've heard a lot about swarm robotics. This concept involves the use of small robots that can work either independently or as a part of a group of identical bots. Check out these bad boys getting busy from engineers at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. These are robotic snails that can move around by sticking to surfaces and each other. Almost like Legos, but snails and robotic. Each bot has a spherical ferromagnetic iron body with a battery, microprocessor and other electronics inside. The bottom has rubber tracks with built-in magnets. Between the two tracks is a retractable vacuum suction cup. When the robot moves in quote free mode, the suction cup remains extended and de-energized. The bot simply navigates its tracks over both smooth and uneven terrain, using the magnets on these tracks to climb on the shells of other robot snails. Once in place, the bot switches to quote strong mode by lowering and engaging its suction cup. One iron snail is then pressed lightly against the shell of another while retaining the ability to rotate. In this video, the robots are remotely controlled, but the developers plan to give them autonomy in the future. That's all for now, folks. Subscribe to our channel, like this video, like our other videos, and stay tuned for more from the world of high tech.